Welcome to the Board Game Network. I'm going to be explaining how to play this game called Crazy Carts. It plays three to eight players in about 45 to 60 minutes, eight years and up. And this is really a team game. Uh, so you can have up to four teams of two. And what you do is you have two different people in a cart. One of you is controlling some of the parts of the cart and the other person is controlling the other parts to the cart but you cannot share with each other what you're planning on doing so you're kind of having to work together blindly um, it does have a solitaire board here also so you can play three people or five people an odd number of people and the odd person would take this one and be in a cart by himself it however does have a couple of things one of them that uh, blocks some of the parts and one of them it is a benefit to some of the parts so he's randomly drawing those and his cards that he has is a little bit different uh, selection of cards uh, so that's only if you have an odd number of players otherwise you take uh, two screens and so I've got the goblin screens here. You've got two sets of cards. One of you is going to have one set. One's going to have the other set. And then you're going to have these two play mats. So you need to make sure your cards, uh, your cards here are, are identical. They just have a different back to them. So each person is going to have a deck of six cards. And so you've got one, 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 and a two, and a three. You're going to set up your race track this way. You've got the starting track here, and then you've got two more. And actually what you do is you do a qualifying round to start, and whoever gets uh, to the end first gets some benefit for the real race. And you're going to add another tile here to make the race a little bit longer. And so you're going to have also one of your carts so this is set up for if you've got two players or two teams, if you've got three teams, or if you've got four teams. So I'll just set it up here for two teams. And you've got a speedometer here. And the faster you're going, the fewer cards you get to draw from your deck. So it's harder, you get less to choose from the faster you're going. Sounds kind of reasonable, doesn't it? You're going too fast. Here's a power-up thermometer to keep track of how many power-ups uh, energy you have. You've got a stack here, which are, these are benefit things that after you get done with the qualifying round, the winner draws two of these and, and uh, second place gets one. Here's your power-ups. Once you get up to 10 on th this track here, you get to draw a power-up. Or if you move across one of these tiles out here, then you get to draw a power-up. And these are good things that happen. You need to see all these ones with like traps on them. You're going to mix these up. These are all obstacle tiles. You're going to mix these up. One side is usually rocks and the other side something else. Just randomize them, throw them out here. And if you notice, you're not going to make it around them. It's not about having a, uh, an accident-free race. It's about getting there the fastest that you can, even though you've run into some stuff. These, uh, these red POW markers here go at the top of your race, your speed track. And that keeps track of damage. The lightning bolt goes at the bottom of your power up track. And you have an arrow and that keeps track of your speed that goes out here on your speed. And you have a bottle in case you're thirsty during the game, I think. 
and your teams you play across from each other so you don't see each other's movement if you sit next to them you might see each other uh, so you sit across you each have your screen there to hide what you're doing the person that's got the charging on their mat whoever takes that needs to take the charge monitor here so we'll put that over there and whoever has the speed controls the speed is going to have the speed track here to keep track of speed you also notice that your fours have a cutout in them and this is for advanced play which advanced it really isn't that advanced but you punch those out and then randomize them and if you decide to play with them you just draw one at random and stick it in there for phase four of the turn and then you have that ability so let's just go through the phases the phases are very simple uh, if you look, they're numbered here on your track. Number one's going to be first, and that's initiative. So when you're playing these cards, you're behind your screen, and you're throwing down some cards behind here. Let's say you want to go first in this race. So you might put some initiative down there, some cards devoted to initiative. So I'm putting two down there. So whoever has the, uh, the highest initiative is going to go first. Uh, if there's a tie, you break the tie by whoever's the farthest, closest, closest to the finish line. And if you have a tie again, then you break it with uh, your rock, paper, scissors. Break it with rock, paper, scissors if you have a tie again. So that's initiative. And then that all happens simultaneous. Initiative happens simultaneous. All the other ones happen in initiative order. So whoever got the highest initiative is going to take phases 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then whoever has the next initiative is going to go next and next and next. Okay, so um, phase 2 is um, each one, each the goblins, the elves, the, the barbarians, they all have their own special ability for phase two. And so that's explained right here in their special ability. Like the uh, goblin here has turn and go. The goblin cart can turn before it moves. You must still play cards on the turning action as normal. And, but the turn is resolved during the resolution of action two instead of seven. If you look at seven, seven allows you to turn. So this allows, the goblin has the ability to turn before they go instead of after they go. Grabbing, the elves may take power-ups from adjacent spaces. So instead of running over the top of the space, you can be next to the space when you go by and grab the power-up. The lasso allows, uh, allows you to move one enemy cart towards you. Uh, the ram allows the dwarven cart to destroy obstacles at the cost of the cart's durability. When you enter a space with an obstacle, you stop as normal, take one damage, and remove the obstacle from the board. You may only use the, round, the ram once per round, but normally you take damage equal to your speed. So this is, the ram is going to only give you one damage instead of whatever your speed damage is. For phase three, the way phase three works is if you have a power up or you can have multiple power ups, but you only get to use one per turn, it'll tell you what the cost of the power up is to play it. You put the token on your power up and then you pay the cost, whatever the cost is for that power up and you put that down there. And then that happens in turn three. This one says what? The enemy cart gets a minus two speed. And you, so you just pick whichever cart you wanted to, get, to slow down. 
Um, and then you go to four, which is that special advanced ability. This one here says take two power ups instead of one when you have 10 power. But you still have to, it says pay one to use it. So you still would have to devote one card with a, with a one icon on it uh, when it hits 10, when it hits 10 on your thing. So you'll notice the person who's moving the power is not the person who has the ability to get the two power-ups. And you can't talk about, are you going to do this this turn? The, then number five is breaking. And so breaking would slow you down. So if somebody devoted, uh, let's say we voted two to breaking and you were at four, that slows you down to two. And then speed up happens. So let's say you had a three on speed up, one, two, three. And so again, you need to be looking ahead on where your cart's going. You certainly don't want to speed up if you're headed for the wall or something. Um, then the move happens after phase six and before phase seven. So whatever speed you were at, you would move. And so one, two, three, I just hit an obstacle. An obstacle immediately stops you. And this one says, this is a rocks. Take damage equal to your speed. So we were at speed five. So one, two, three, four, five damage. Reduce your speed to zero. Okay, so you're starting back over there. You take the rocks off. You're still going the same direction. But there's other things out here like ice rink and takeoff and other ones that they explain to you how they work. Phase seven is turning. Turning, uh, if you devote uh, energy to your turn, you have to have enough energy there to match or exceed your speed. And if you don't, then the turn doesn't happen. So once you've made your move, then you can turn one hex face either direction. I have a speed of or an energy of two and I hit those rocks so I'm down at speed zero so I do have enough energy there so I could turn. Uh, but if I was up at a higher speed and I didn't devote enough energy then the turn just doesn't happen. Then I go to shoot and shoot is Whatever I devote, however much energy I put there, I can shoot my cannon that distance. It doesn't make any difference whether I shoot behind or ahead, whatever. But I've got four here that I've devoted to shooting, so I can shoot four spaces. One, two, three, four. But if some, a cart was up here, I could not shoot it up there. So, and that just gives you a, one of these red cards, which is a damage card. And this one says critical hit, target gets two additional damage, so they would move two damage down on their damage track. Some of them are a miss, and so, uh, this one says no effect, miss. This one says remove one obstacle tile if I'm in range. So these are your obstacle tiles. So instead of instead of hitting uh, one of the carts, you can just take off a tile. Anyway, that's phase eight, and then we go to phase nine. Phase nine is charging, and so what, however much you devote to charging moves your charging track up that much. If you get to 10, you're going to draw a tile. You do not show that to any other player or your teammate, so he doesn't know what kind of power-ups you have. And if you if you were like at nine and you spend three, then you're going to go to ten, and then one, and then two. So you're going to lap over. Um, so that's how charging works. And then number ten is repair. You're going to divide the amount of charge you put there, divide it by two, and that's how much your repair is. So if you devote four there, you're going to repair two spaces. So. That's how all the phases work. They're all laid out neatly on your board. So very easy to remember. And then once that person goes, then it goes on to the next team. When you hit an obstacle, 
I explained what happens um, to the obstacle. You immediately go down to a speed of zero. Usually it tells you that. You take damage equal to whatever your speed is. If you hit the wall, the damage is equal to your speed also and your speed automatically goes to zero. And the wall is any edge piece. If you would go off the board, that's the wall. If you hit another cart, the person that does the hitting takes one damage, the other player, the other team takes a damage. But essentially you're taking a damage for every hit. So if you hit a cart and the cart hits the wall, that would uh, be two damage. And you actually do push the cart one space in the direction that you're going. So you could run him into the wall. Uh, if you have a three carts in a row, the first one and the last one will take a damage, the one in the middle will take two damage. So essentially you're just taking one point of damage for every bump or every hit you, you've got. When you do that, there is no adjustment to your speed. You don't go down to zero or anything. If you do hit the wall, then the opponent's cart goes to zero. So if you run somebody into a wall, they're going to move their speed down to zero. The damage tracker, you have a maximum of six damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, right here. So you cannot take more damage than that. The race ends at the end of the round. So whoever goes off the edge first, you go ahead and complete the round. And if you are the winner for the qualifier, you get to take two upgrades. That's what these are upgrade tiles. Like this one says shield. Each time you get a damage, you get one less damage this race. This one is Big Bertha. Your cannon range is increased by two during the race. So they all have some kind of benefit to you. The second place winner gets one of the upgrades. You're going to keep your power up tokens. Any tokens that you have not used, you're going to keep those. And you're going to keep the power up track where it's at, whatever level it's on. You are going to reduce, first place winner is going to reduce three damage or get rid of damage cards. Some of the damage cards actually go out on your board and affect. You might mess up your brakes or mess up your steering or something. And so you can eliminate those after the qualifying. If you are first place winner, you remove three damage or three cards or any combination. Second place, you remove two. Third, third and fourth, you remove one. And then you set up for the real race. In the real race, you add one more tile out here and then you swap sides with your teammates so you whoever is in charge of speed is now in charge of braking and vice versa and then the winner is the person across the finish line of the real race so that's how you play this game called crazy carts uh, make sure you tune into all of our videos here at the board game network